What's going on guys? This is Riggs and thank you so much for tuning in to this very special ranking video as season 14 is about to come to a close. I wanted to make sure I timed this right so everybody that's watching will be able to maximize their points come season 15 which is pretty much right around the corner from when I'm making this we're talking about two weeks or so before the very next season drops. Now, what we're gonna be talking about specifically is two different play styles, as I've had a lot of people that have been requesting the difference or the benefits between playing passive versus playing aggressive. We see a lot of people that rank up that will often play very passively, that will guarantee those points, or is it better to be much more aggressive when you are trying to rank up. We're gonna kind of break down the two. The very, very first match you're going to see is, if you haven't been able to tell by now, is passive gameplay, being very, very passive and the points and what it kind of requires and just some different strategies behind it. Now, the first two kills that we picked up, remember every single kill is that many more points for when you are ranking up. It's very, very important. Notice where we dropped though. We dropped in Fairy Pier, which is very often never contested by another squad. If you do happen to find another squad here, you might be in trouble because it's going to be a squad that is also ranking because nobody really drops Fairy Pier just because. I mean, the loot's kind of trash. It's off on the kind of in the middle of nowhere, if you will. And there's no guarantee that there's going to be a vehicle, anything like that. So. We dropped Fury Pier. It seemed to be kind of, and of course, I'm playing this way on purpose, you know, kind of for the, the, the purpose of the video. And it's mainly going to be towards the very end where we're going to be talking about points because at the end of the day, the way you rank up is to get points. So these are two totally different ways to get points. Now, a kill is a kill is a kill, as many would say. And the first three kills that we're picking up are pretty much from bots and if you look at the the alive and of course survival uh your your overall survival time is the biggest that's about 80 percent give or take it's about 80 percent of your ranking points go towards uh survival time and notice we haven't done much we're just going from compound to compound never veering too far off from the edge of the zone we're never going to the middle we're not trying to you know go full send into pachinki or crates or anything like that we saw off in fairy pier we worked our way north a little bit and that's where the zone was shifting we came over here we picked up a car uh, just on the road that was right here in razak which is also known to be a pretty hot spot, you know, depending where the flight path is. Then we found this super random compound right here. Notice now there's 10 alive. I still have three kills. I don't think the guy I'm playing with, in case you're wondering, this is pretty much, uh, this is a squad match. Yes, we are in duos. Uh, I went ahead and matched with Rams in this as I was trying to get kind of some random content for you guys. But two of them didn't even make it into the game. And this guy who's, I don't even think he's played the game more than just a few days is, is what it would seem like. But look at the zone. We were blessed by the zone. A minute 40 before the next uh, zone comes in and we're right on the edge. I still have three kills. Look at how many people are alive. You haven't missed anything. I edited out pretty much all the sitting around or you know, if we didn't have a vehicle, we just kind of ran on foot. But we never, we always went to the edge of zone. This is the first like real people we see. We get pushed by these guys in this motorcycle. And of course, look, my teammate ends up getting a knock. I'm like, dude, excellent work. So he gets a knock, which is very, very helpful. Then now I have a vehicle coming in from the other side. I imagine these are two people from the same squads. My partner goes ahead and gets the thirst on INS whatever. And there's the other knock. So it was a 2v3. There's five alive. There's a 2v3. And why these guys kind of were not together, I don't know. So now it's just like that. It's a 2v1. For those of you that play, as we try to find this next person, for those of you guys that play passive, will you be able to gain points very, very fast? Yes. Will you be able to win an upwards of 80% of your matches in the top 10? Yes. The difference is, and what I always tell people in my ranking videos, is you never want to rank in the sense just to rank. Meaning, if you're going to be playing passive like this just because you want to gain points, what you're going, the benefit other than getting a big plus sign 
you're not going to be able to reap the benefits as far as skill, as far as the players that you're going to be coming up against. Uh, you're going to see a big difference in the style of gameplay. And why the hell I have a bison? I have absolutely no idea. So I had the 6x dial down to 3. Missed all those shots. The, 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 the crate I looted had an M4. I guess I just kind of figured, okay, I'll just end this with the bison. You know, whatever. We'll get it done. But check it out. M762 ends up, the random, ends up securing the chicken dinner. But check this out. Plus 21. Pay close attention to that. We ended this with four kills. All right? We ended this with four kills, and we got 21 points. That's a lot of points. But pay close attention, as I kind of work, walk you guys through this, pay close attention to the style of gameplay, the movement, um, as far as the types of rotations that we make, the, the, the fact that we're going to spend most of this uh, match where we're always going to have a vehicle, we're going to be pushing, we're going to be capitalizing on those knocks that we get, uh, the flanking, the rotations, all that good stuff. So we started off in Raz. You can see I had two kills. All I got was pretty much two bot kills. Probably should have tap fire there, but we ended up uh, dialing it down and we ended up getting that knock. All I have is a 2x right now. Uh, Liquor Scotch, who is a YouTube sponsor, shout out to him. He has, comes from a really, really good Indian clan. Uh, their clan is um, called Liquor. So shout out to Scotch right there. And you can saw we just got a nice little wipe right there. We ended up killing all four of those dudes. And we were, we were able, by getting that wipe, we get pushed by this guy in this Dacia. I noticed we're going pretty much full send on everything, playing very, very aggressive for the kills. And you can see right here, nice little uh, crouch fire right there. Ended up ADSing and got him taken out. And that was the last member in that squad. Now this one, I don't know. I don't know what's going on with this. I want to say this was about, dude has a pistol. So we ended up lighting him up with the scar. We swap over to the UMP. Lazy Bones 23, I don't know, kind of sounds like a bot name. Regardless though, look at the kill total. We're already at nine kills. That last match, we only had four in the entire match. And both of these games are going to end the same way. We are going to end up getting the chicken dinner both these games. But it's two totally different ways to get them. And like I said, what it comes down to, playing like this, where you're kind of you know, pushing everything, where you're playing with a squad, nobody in this squad is a random. We have Fema, we have my boy Calvinson, and we have uh, Liquor Scotch from the Clan Liquor, and myself. No, so no one in here is a random at all. So everybody in this squad knows how to play. Everyone's you know pretty much ranking up, which is going to be absolutely huge for those of you that have to play with randoms. Doing pushes like this, the smokes, you only can carry three people so much. And we got completely lasered by this dude with the M249. Uh, plus, you know, he had a nice little nade right there. But you're going to see a nice engagement between us where we went from apartments. Now we're going over to school. But playing with randoms, this would not be able to pretty much be coordinated. Just, it comes down to the level of skill. So if you're playing with a bunch of randoms and you're trying to rank up, you almost have no choice, unless you get lucky like I did in my last video, I'll leave a card at the top. Unless you get lucky, where you play with a, a random or two that knows what they're doing, you're pretty much gonna have to play passive if you're trying to rank up. When you have a squad, a, a full squad of people that you play with often or that know how to play this game, you can do things like this, where they, where they drop the smokes, where they're gonna be able to know how to use cover fire, all those things. And that's why I always tell people, don't just rank up for the sake of ranking up. Rank up, but do it where you're going to actually be improving in the game. And the reason why I say that is because if you play passive, the moment you come across a squad, the very moment you come across a squad, any squad that knows what they're doing, you're pretty much going to die. And that's why people resort into playing passive to avoid these fights. You're not going to be able to do coordinated pushes like this. Uh, it's At the end of the day, it's just not going to work out. And the first squad you come across that's even semi-decent is going to take you out. You're not going to have the reflexes. You're not going to have uh, the accuracy. And the, mo yeah, the most important thing is the reaction time, especially in close quarter combat. You're just not going to be able to do it. What this guy is doing, I have no idea. Thought that was a headshot. That's, look, he spins around. Whoop, hello. So we end up taking him out. And now we're down to nine. But again, look at the difference in the kill tolls. We have 13 kills. And we're going to be doing like four, if not five times the damage of the first game you saw, which again was very, very passive. 
And right now, it's going to show at the very end, but I believe I'm in crown two in this match right here. Heard some shots. You're going to see a crate. You're going to see some smokes. And you're going to see a motorcycle. I think the smokes just wore off. But you're going to see a motorcycle. We heard some shots. They kind of Houdini'd on us a little bit. But, and notice, we always have a vehicle, which is Let's something go. that my boy Fake Jacob mentioned in the last Play Like a Pro series. I'll leave a card up at the top to that as well. But you always, especially when you're playing on a map like Erangel or Miramar, um, even Vikindi, you always want to have a vehicle. You know what I mean? You just cannot be found. Uh, you don't want to find yourself without a vehicle. Make sure you pick at least someone in your squad is picking up a gas can. So we're down to five. We're three alive. Same situation of uh, the very, very last match, just kind of in reverse. So Naughty Post, he ended up running him over. And we see his squad. This squad might have been playing this entire game passive. There's snakes in this last circle. Ended up getting the wipe. We finished this with 15 kills. So that's a huge difference from passive gameplay to aggressive gameplay where you're getting those kills, you're pushing those squads, you're improving your reaction time. Don't just rank up for this, for, just for the purpose of ranking. You wanna be getting some benefit out of it than just a plus in front of that number. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. But until the very next one, this has been Riggs from Riggs Gaming.